this is a little update on our original one. Um, the LED seems brighter for some reason. Don't know why. It's, uh, definitely getting a voltage rise on the run battery during the warmth of the day. So I got my butt out of bed early this morning at 6:20 a.m. and it's about five degrees centigrade. Our run battery was at 1.209. Now it's about 25 degrees. Um, Called 20 past three in the afternoon, and our run battery is at 1.214. So it's definitely going up and down with the temperature. Now I was going to remove that charge battery and give it a run last night, but I haven't. I've left it in there. That one at the moment. The polarity will be back to front, but it's just not the clock. That's at 1.275 volts. So we're uh, charging up still. So all in all, been uh, we're on now, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So tonight will be the um, fourth night. And then we started recording after the second night. So now our run battery is sitting at 1.214. And we started off with 1.228, I believe. Um, in the very first video. So, um, it is dropping. However, that's our second charge battery. The LED is fairly bright. I don't know why that, that should have actually got duller the higher the charge battery voltage gets, but it's getting brighter. I'm um, not sure why. Anyway, here's a little brain teaser for you. Um, I'll disconnect this and we'll start from the word go. Same circuit. This time I've put two coils in series for our what would be our run coils. This coil here is just the sniffer coil for the scope. Our uh, trigger coil over here, which of course one side goes to the emitter and the other side to the base. No resistor, just straight from the coil. I've put a standard 1.5 volt battery in here. Uh, this battery here isn't doing so good, it's not very healthy, so I'm just trying to see if I can get it back to life. And uh, I'm simply coming off the positives through here and then out of here back to the input for the coils. This is just so we can put our amp meter across here, which we'll do right now. Okay. 1.1 microamps. Not quite sure where that draw is coming from. Um, maybe just the resistance that you get across the uh, transistors. Anyway, absolutely no. It's actually coming down. Maybe it'll have something to do with that multimeter as well. Not sure. Anyway, here we have a 12 volt motor casing with the magnet still in there. You can see. Oh. Even magnetic on the outside. So this is the uh, little brain teaser. So what's supposed to happen is the run coil fires up, produces a voltage in the wrong direction, which switches the transistor off. When our run coils collapse, you know, the magnetic field collapses, it's supposed to induce a voltage in our trigger coil, back the other way, which sends a positive charge to the base of the transistor and once again fires up our run coils. This coil is supposed to rely on the magnetic field 
from the RAM coils to operate the transistor, which of course is known as our trigger coil in the um, SSG setups. Okay, so to start this, I think you grab a trusty old magnet. No, as you can see, nothing on the scope. Is there in my? Uh, oh, the magnet definitely has an effect on that. Take that away. Put it down. Just want to get that zeroed in, which it is already. So uh, simply got to wave a magnet across there. The right polarity up. As you can see, we're fired up. We're drawing 74.2 microamps at the moment. So because of the two coils in series up around 380 odd ohms resistance now, we're of course drawing less current than that one there. So uh, the interesting thing is that our so-called trigger coil, which fires the transistor up, is all the way over here. And we can have it sitting that way, facing the coils. Our system is still oscillating. We can turn it directly over, which normally would bugger things up. And I have to change the level a bit on that. And there we go. And we're still oscillating. Okay, here's what we're going to do now. We're going to take this big magnetic box here. I'm going to carefully, not there or not, I'm going to carefully drop our trigger coil down into that very strong magnetic field. Now as I'm doing it, you can see it's running muck, that's my fingers shaking, because I'm trying to do it carefully, I'm going to have to take another bite at this. Okay, so not only now is our trigger coil surrounded in a very thick steel cage, it's also between two very strong magnets. And this system is still running. So, um, trigger coil is definitely not being powered by the two run coils. So, where exactly is the current coming from to fire the base? of the transistor up, so our transistor switches on. Uh, the charge battery is coming up. But very interesting as to how that is still working. No. And we are still charging. At quite a good rate actually. So I might just see if I can take this scope and place it and place it across our emitter and our collector. I have to drop the voltage down a bit much. Okay, well, that's um, DC set on the one volt divisions and our time divisions are at 20 microseconds. So we have one, two, three volts on the output side of the collector before the diode put it after the diode and of course we have our 1.3 uh, volts plus our diode loss should probably give us the two combined voltages of the battery So 
So now we will switch to AC. And that is what we have. The voltage over time looks very even except for the little kick when our transistor fires up. Well, just before the transistor fires up. So, um, yeah, who wants to answer that? How is that uh, trigger coil actually working? Good little riddle for you all.